Uh, my name is Michael Anderson, Mango Mike Anderson, and I'm uh, from Alexandria, Virginia. I'm currently um, a restaurateur in the city here and have been since, uh, since the early 70s. So I've lived in Alexandria since uh, 1972. I moved here right out of, right out of college. Uh, originally, I'm from um, uh, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, just outside of Pontiac, Michigan. Grew up there. I went to school in, in Michigan, and uh, right after, um, you know, my roommate and I from college decided that we wanted to kind of take a year's sabbatical, and before we, we all had both had jobs lined up at Ford Motor Company, because in, in Michigan, everybody goes to work for the big three. So I was supposed to go to work for Ford, and we decided to take a sabbatical and, and move someplace for a year just to get some different experience to move back to Michigan and, and continue. So we got newspapers from... 10 major cities around the country, and D.C. seemed to be the most exciting area in the country at the time, had the lowest unemployment rate, uh, was close to uh, the shore, wasn't that far away from Michigan, and, and we'd heard about this little town called Alexandria, which is border D.C., and we thought, well, let's, uh, let's move to Alexandria for a year. So we never went back. Well, you know, Alexandria... Um, you know, we were just in Michigan. We knew we knew nothing about the area. Uh, kind of picked Alexandria just because of its geographic location to D.C. Had no idea about its his, historic significance, its background, and we were um, uh, pretty amazed when we moved here. Actually, and 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 view the city and Old Town and the location of the Potomac and the proximity to Washington. And we thought, man, for picking something, but basically throwing a dart at a map. And picking Alexandria, you know, we've, we've won the lottery here. And, uh, and the more time I spend in Alexandria, the more impressed with the city I am. My passion is the restaurant business. Um, I, you know, I, I really am, I'm, I'm really blessed because I, 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 I love what I do. I love getting up and going to work in the morning. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of funny growing up, uh, growing up in Michigan and in high school and in college and going to all the guidance counselors, nobody ever told you that you could get a job where you enjoyed going to work. Everybody told you that you had to have a career, you had to provide for a family, you had to pay your mortgage, you had to be you know, a, you know, a good person in society. But nobody, at least back in the 50s and 60s, said, hey, you can, you can have a job. You like what you do. And I, I came to D.C. from Michigan Stumbled into the restaurant business. I started the King's Landing, which is now uh, 1972, which is now Union Street. And, uh, um, you know, I, I just started there, and I, I really liked the business. And I, much to my parents' chagrin, who wanted me to go back and go to work for Ford Motor, uh, I just I stayed with it, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. Can I keep on expounding? Can I keep on? Does it matter if I ramble on here? Um you know, and to that end, I've I've really you know I've met some I've met some great people in the restaurant business, and I've had some pretty good mentors, uh, among which was uh, Gordon King and Jim Kimsey. Gordon King and Jim Kimsey owned both of those up Capitol Hill, and a couple of places in D.C. And I worked for those two guys for about four years. Jim Kimsey went on, of course, to co-found AOL. So he kind of uh, uh, you know he he got his start in the restaurant business, and uh, he moved kind of moved on from there. He's done pretty well for himself, um, but I've also I've I've had the ability to uh, get my family involved in in the business, and that's been, you know, working with your kids is a pretty neat deal, um, because uh, you first of all you're on a different dimension with them than you are as a parent to parent daughter kind of relationship, but working with your kids and and my kids uh, at least uh, one of them has kind of fallen in love with the restaurant business and. She got an MBA and uh, uh, at, at, at uh, in a small school in Michigan. Has gone on and now she's the new general manager of of Mango Mike's. Who just took that deal over in, in, in September of 2013. My wife, who was an ex nurse, has fallen back over the restaurant business. And in her early nursing days, she used to work at Chadwick's, and and now she's getting ready. To, she's going to give me some competition. She's getting ready to open her own restaurant by the Carlisle Project called Sweet Fire Donna's, and she claims she's going to go up there and kick my butt and, uh, and barbecue, so we're all encouraging her to do that. Um, my youngest daughter works at the sushi bar in Delray, and 
I don't think her, rest, her restaurants aren't her passion. She'll move on to something else. But and all my kids have worked in all my joints, the beach restaurant, Mango Mike's, uh, their whole life growing up. And, and, and that's really been a cool deal. It's just, uh, it's really neat working with your kids and seeing them in a whole different kind of professional environment where it's, you know, it's, it's your, your co-workers and you're not father-daughter kind of deal. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I enjoy the business. I, uh, I, I love the challenges. I think I've owned more restaurants in the city of Alexandria than anybody else in the history of the city. Uh, not all of them were, um, were home runs by any means, but uh, I, I like doing business in the city. Uh, I might um, complain about the special use permit process that's rampant in the city, but I think, uh, I think overall the, the politicians, and the BAR, and the SUP process has really, you know, has generated a pretty, um, pretty good environment for the business community and the residents of the city. And, and as you look around, if you travel to Annandale or Arlington or McLean or Springfield, and you look at those communities and you look at Alexandria and you say, you know, what, um, what community do I want to live in? What community do I want to do business in? And I'm real happy here in Alexandria. In 1972, my roommate and I from college, the Golden Kazoo, um, you know, at a random throw a dart at a, at a board, at a map, and pick a city, moved to Alexandria. Um, I was, uh, you know, I was searching for a job, uh, and I had worked uh, as a busboy when I was in high school, but other than that, I had no, no real restaurant experience. And um, so I, I, you know, I, I was living at the uh, Virginia Lodge, which is down Route 1 south of Beltway, which is not the Hilton by any means. And uh, there was a guy living next to me, Luther Burbank McKean, who was, according to him, a restaurant designer. And I was kind of uh, surprised to see a restaurant designer living next to me at the Virginia Lodge. But he said, look, I just got them done uh, designing this French restaurant for three young guys in Old Town Alexandria called the King's Landing. I heard, heard they're looking for some staff. I said, well, great, I'm going to go down there. So I, I went down the King's Landing and knocked on the door. This young owner came to the door, and I said, hey, uh, Mike Anderson, I'm looking. Uh, I lied to him. I told him I'd been a waiter before, looking for a job as a waiter. And he said, uh, he said no, no openings. I, and I thought, well, I, I really need a job. We were, didn't have any money. And I said, well, uh, how about busboy? And he said, no, I got that covered too. And I turned to leave and he said, but wait. And he said, I need a dishwasher. And I said, well, you know, I got to tell you, I came to, uh, I came left Michigan in much fanfare and I, I, I'm a college graduate. I, I, I can't wash dishes. I need to find, you know, I just can't do it. He said, no, no, take this job and I'll promote you as soon as I can. I said, I, you know, I, 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 and he kept on beating me up about it. And I said, okay. So I showed up that night. I brought my diploma. And I hung it above the dishwashing machine back in the kitchen, and I started washing dishes. My first job to King's Lining on Union Street there, which is now Union Street Public House. And I got to tell you, I was pretty depressed because I, you know, I really, <laughs> I didn't think a college graduate I was going to end up this way. But I was back there washing, washing dishes, and, uh, and towards the end of the shift, this, this waiter came back in there, and he, he said, hey, my name's Rob Zimmerman. He said, King's Lining, we take care of our own. He brought me a beer. And Rob was like one of the first, uh, Zimmy was like one of the first real people I'd met in, in D.C. And uh, ended up by uh, moving in, Golden Kazoo and I moved in with Zim uh, into his apartments on, off of Beauregard Street. And I moved out of the Virginia Lodge. And Zim was like uh, one, of the, one of the first guys I've met in D.C. And so I'm working at King's Landing to become a busboy and I get promoted to... Uh, to a waiter and I worked there for about six months and I go, you know, I really, uh, this is, uh, this is not too bad. You know, I, I kind of like doing this and I think I want to, I want to stay in this. And, um, the, the guy, one of the three owners of the King's Landing, Brian McMahon, he used to manage a, a real, one of the first saloons in DC on 19th street called the Aeroplane. And he said, you know what, uh, they're looking for a, a general manager of the Aeroplane in, in DC. And uh, why don't you interview for that job? And he talked me to going down and, 
and I didn't really have any management experience, and but I knew I really liked the restaurant business, and so I went down there and had four or five meetings with uh, the owner, and uh, was able to talk myself into the job, and and took over uh, took over the King's uh, the uh, aeroplane as a general manager, and and uh, just have been in restaurants uh, ever since. I've worked in just a whole slew of places in D.C. and and you know Alexandria and. Uh, uh, but it just uh, it just kind of tickled me that uh, I, how much I, I enjoyed the business. My buddy uh, my buddy Zim went on with another guy who worked at uh, the King's Landing, uh, Ben Benson. They opened up uh, Ramparts in Alexandria in 1978. In uh, 1975, I opened up a couple other guys that were the Golden Kazoo and opened up Joe Theismann's and Bailey's Crossroads. And then in 1979. Uh, uh, I opened up the Shooter McGee's with a guy Tom Jackson, so and Zim and and Ron and uh, and and all those guys uh, are Ben Benson. We're all still friends today. Uh, ben Benson went out and opened up Southside 815 in, uh, in 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 Old Town there, and and uh, it's all it's very uh, incestuous. All these guys in the restaurant business are all kind of branching out, doing different things, and overlapping and. I ended up by selling and bought Ramparts from Zim years later, and then turned around and sold. I sold Ramparts six years after that back to Tom Jackson, who was my partner in Shooter McGee's, and you know, just a, it's a big shuffleboard. But uh, I, I just got lucky. I, I, I'm glad I didn't go back to Michigan. Uh, real uh, enjoyed the restaurant business. I, I, I maybe could have made more money in other uh, in other endeavors because I you know, first couple decades didn't make a lot of money in the restaurant business, but. Uh, Everything, everything's uh, working out now. Uh, you know, it could have gone. It, I'll tell you what, it could have gone. It could have gone a number of different ways. And and um, I spent three years down in Southern Maryland at a, a place I got called the Old Port Inn, and that was just three years of hell down there. And again, uh, you know, I went bankrupt that deal. And had I been married, none of these things. You know, none of these. Things, you know, I, I would have had to take a real conservative. I'd have gone to work for Marriott or. Imagine a Burger King or God knows what, but uh, it just and it's just amazing how how uh, you travel these. You go down a certain road, and you come to a fork in the road, and and why you go left or right? You know, you flip a coin, and you go left, and then you you stumble upon a certain person that has some effect on your life, and they send you down another road. There's another fork, and and you flip a coin, and you Take a take the right path, and then that path leads you to another person, another opportunity, and or a, a woman you end by marrying, and and you know just it's just amazing the twists and turns. You couldn't you couldn't plot that out for me where I've gone from point A to where I am today. You just it was unplottable, and but here you are, and I'm sure a lot of people said the same thing, and you just I think you've got to you've got to um, Take those opportunities and just run with them. And, and I think it's really important that you always give it um, 110%. And if it doesn't work out, it wasn't meant to be. And, and um, don't lament it. Uh, don't cry over spilt milk. And just go on the next opportunity because there will be another opportunity down the road. But it's always real important that you give, a, you give that 110% because... Uh, you know, if you don't, it's you know things aren't going to work out. But and a lot of things just I've had I've had restaurant deals that I thought that would try to buy a certain restaurant that I thought was going to be it. I was so excited about it, and it fell through for whatever reason. And and but I'm glad it fell through because the one I found after that was so much better than that one and a better deal. And and you can don't get me started on dating and and men and women and who you end up with that deal because. That's that's uh, unrecordable, but I I got lucky and and certainly married the right woman. Been married 25 years now, got three great kids, and uh, and couldn't be happier. I've always been asked who inspires me, and I I've had um, you know a lot of um, you know a lot of mentors in the restaurant business, but and this is really gonna this is gonna sound kind of corny here, but. Uh, I have to say it was uh, my mother. My mother has been a huge inspiration in my life. Uh, she was a, uh, 
uh, an undying fan. I could do I could do wrong, do no wrong. Supported all my endeavors, all my crazy ideas, all my early entrepreneurship, and uh, it's amazing that woman's impact has had in my life. And uh, she's been uh, she was terrific. But uh, mom, thanks very much. One reason why I think I was successful in the, in the restaurant business is that I got uh, married uh, late in life. And you wonder how those two things are tied in together. But, you know, the, uh, one of the most difficult, you know, one of the most challenging things in the restaurant business is always capitalization. Pull enough money together to, to make your deal happen. Uh, we had, in my early years, we had, had a number of failures. Things didn't work out. Wrong location, wrong concept undercapitalization, whatever. Um, had I been married, uh, I would have had to take in, and I had a family, would have had to take a whole different course, I think. I'd have taken a more conservative course in, in, uh, in, in my entrepreneurship because I wouldn't have been able to take uh, a, a chance on something and not be able to support my family. You know, my dad came out of you know, World War II. I was a baby boomer. He didn't have the ability to take a chance on something. He had to Right away, get a get a job, which he didn't like, but he did. Didn't complain about it, but he had to support a family. I was lucky; enough, I didn't get married till I was forty, so I was lucky enough I could take a lot of chances. Some of them worked, some of them didn't work. Uh, so that by the time I did get married, uh, things were kind of on a pretty much even keel. And that, coupled with having a real supportive wife, made made just a huge difference. And that was a huge part of my success was the fact that. I had support from the family and my wife and some of the crazy, uh, crazy investments we made and endeavors we made to make these restaurants happen. She was totally supportive. And without her, uh, you know, none, none of this would have happened. Uh, and I'm tickled pink that uh, she's on the verge of opening her own restaurant, Sweet Fire Donna's. So, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of the legacy, uh, the legacy continues. I'm inspired to do what I do with the community. You know, I really believe that you're a product of your environment. You know, I'm just, I'm just an average guy that moved to Michigan and happened to pick Alexandria and moved to. And this, this town, uh, with the, the number of people that are, are engaged in this community on all different fronts, on business fronts, on social fronts, on charitable fronts, you know, you just, that rubs off on you. And you can't but help to get involved in this community be, because of that, uh, because of that uh, osmosis process. And in my years here, my 40-some years here, I've met a whole lot of people that have really influenced me. And you can't, you can't but help to get drawn in to do things for the community because you see so many people around you doing the same thing. I mean, you know, people like... Uh, you know, uh, John Porter, who's very in involved. Um, you know, you got Val Hawkins, Charlotte Hall. Um, you know, uh, just a whole, the, you got the, the woman down at the Delray Mafia who've really taken Delray and turned that thing around, Pat Miller and Gail Ruder and those folks down there. So I, I, think, I think if I had moved to any other community, if I'd moved to the Chicago, moved to New York, I don't think I would have been half as involved in the community as I as I as I am now because of the uh, the influence of all these folks in the city. You know, uh, yeah, I'll tell you about that. How that came about. Um, you know, we uh, John Porter's a good uh, John Porter's a good friend of mine, and he's um, um, you know he's head of this uh, Act for Alexandria, which does a great job of help corralling all these nonprofits, and there's. I think there's 126 in Alexandria alone of nonprofits. And when we opened up um, the Holy Cow, the Burger Place in Del Rey, we had been influenced by a, a restaurant up in, in New York City that was that had come up with this deal that you could you could name your own burger and and create your own burger and name it, and then you would tie that burger into your email address. And for every burger that that restaurant sold, they would send you 25 cents as a royalty on that burger. And 
And the benefit was we thought, well, here's you're going to tweet and you're going to Facebook about your burger because you want people to go in and buy that burger so you didn't get your 25 cents. And we thought that we loved that kind of, um, you know, that customer engagement. And then we got talking about it, my partner Bill Blackford and I, we got talking about it. And, and we thought, you know, instead of giving that quarter back to the customer, why don't we give a quarter to a local charity? And, um, and we got John Porter involved, and we, brain, we did have a real brain, uh, brain trust deal, brain meeting with John Porter, and uh, John Porter liked that idea. And we said, look, we're going to give the customer a chance to give a quarter that we'll pay. It's not the customer's quarter. It's our quarter to pick a charity of its choice. And, but we didn't want to write you know, 120 checks every month. So what we did is we basically we write a check every month to John Porter, and then he distributes those funds to the 120. So what we've done, you know, it's, it's, and we thought some people would look at it as kind of a gimmick or, you know, uh, whatever, but people really got into it. And some people spend way too much time looking at the list of the 120 charities to figure out who, who to give money to. Uh, but it's really taken a lot of uh, uh, charities and, and nonprofits that didn't have any, um, or had very little kind of street presence and gave them sort of a, a street presence in the community with this on this deal. And we keep a running chart on who's who's the top one, who's making the you know who's getting the most quarters and stuff. And uh, that's worked out. That's been a pretty cool deal. And uh, does it bring more people in? The, do we sell more hamburgers because of it? At holy cow, you know I I, I don't think so. But and I'm also really pretty amazed on. How, how quickly those quarters add up. We thought, oh, what's a quarter? Man, we're writing some pretty good-sized checks to John Porter to, to hand out every month. But people are, are really into it. Uh, the nonprofits are into it. And uh, it's, it's, it's been a kind of a win-win deal for everybody. You know, whoever wants to, you know, if, if you want to make a difference in the city, all you have to do is get involved. There are so many great opportunities to, uh, to get involved in between the business community, the political environment, the nonprofits, the charities. Uh, you just got to figure out what pushes your buttons. And, uh, and they're not always looking for you to write a check. They're just looking for some of your time. But you're going you're gonna to find out that a big byproduct of this thing is you're going to meet, start meeting a whole different set of people that you won't meet in your own sphere. And when I got in the ch involved in the Chamber of Commerce, I, I did it uh, as an ability to kind of promote my business. But I, I found out that it, it, although that helped, what the Chamber of Commerce really did was introduce me to a whole group of very um, savvy, hardworking, interesting people that were involved in the Chamber. And I, I met uh, just a slew of new friends, people I would never meet in, a, in my day-to-day -day restaurant experience. I got to meet through the Chamber. So I've been involved in the Chamber for you know, I don't know, 15, 15 years now, and it's been great. So, if you want to, if you want to get more involved in the in the in the, the city of Alexandria, do it. But you're going to be surprised at kind of the byproduct of that involvement. You're thinking that maybe I'm just going to get involved because I want to donate some time to charity, but you're going to end up by finding out that you're going to meet some new people, new experiences that you that you would that you would never stumble upon in your day to day life. So. Um, it just, it's an incremental thing. It's an incremental thing that's, it will, it will serve you well. My girls started in the restaurant when they were like about 10 or 12, and they were running, like running hush puppies. And, uh, and uh, my, my wife got mad at me because when they did start, I made, them, I made all of them work in the kitchen. Um, and I thought it was important that they work side by side with the, with all the group in the kitchen, because that the kitchen team, those guys, they that's hard work back there. It's hot, it's hard work, and uh, if if you've done that, you really appreciate their effort. And then we be, we become a waiter, or waitress on the floor, or a bartender. You know what those guys go through. And so I've made all my girls go back, and they've prepped in the kitchen. They work side by side with the Latinos and whoever's back there working, and uh, that's been a great education for them. And uh, and I think they. They certainly appreciate what it takes now to, to to be in that business and all the moving parts and stuff. So, they've all all three of them, you know, 
and two of the three are still working in the restaurant, and the third one who's going to graduate, you know, this year from college is, has worked every summer in, in one of the joints, and she, I'm sure this summer, hopefully, she'll come back and work, uh, work one more time. If I'm up there at that great restaurant in the sky and I'm uh, leaving some words for my uh, for my girls down back in my my girls my wife down back down in Alexandria, and I, I would just say you know um, you're gonna you're gonna spend a lot of time at work, and um, you need to find you make sure whatever profession you go in it doesn't have to be in the restaurant business but whatever you whatever direction you take. Make sure it's something that you, you really enjoy doing. And don't do it for the money. The money will always follow. But do it for the job satisfaction. Be excited about getting up in the morning and going to work. Um, uh, you know, be excited about your accomplishments during the course of the day. And, um, and get involved in the community. Um, and, you know, get involved in the community and get involved in these nonprofits and, and doing work within the community it doesn't mean you have to you have to write a big check. It means you know you want to look at incremental gains and incremental uh, uh, participation in your part in these different charities and business alliances, the Chamber of Commerce. You want to really you want to be ingrained in the fabric of the community. It's really important. And it's not a big thing. You don't need to be chairman of the Chamber of Commerce. You don't need to write a ten thousand dollar check to you know, the Campania Center. But you, you want to build these grains of sand during the course of the year in your involvement so that at the end of the year, you've got this little mound of, you got this mound of sand and you've accomplished this during the course of the year. And I think that's, that's the important thing you need, need to do. And, uh, and you need to have, have to have, you know, you need to have good principles, you need to have um, good moral character, and you need to just you need to figure out the right thing is and do the right thing. You know, I guess I'd like to be remembered as just a, um, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just an average guy who, who, who happened to pick the right city to move to, met a lot of great people, was able to open a couple of pretty good restaurants, uh, raised a good family, um, Promoted, um, helped promote business through the my association with the Chamber of Commerce, and supported a lot of good nonprofits in the city. And uh, you know, I'm not looking for fame and fortune. I, I've just, uh, you know, I got I got three great great girls. They're going to con hopefully continue the uh, the legacy with the restaurants. And uh, um, I, I I've been real blessed. I uh, just just remember as a as a Pretty good guy. Mango Mike was a pretty decent guy. You know, the Living Legends program, um, you know, as I said, there's there a lot of committed people in, in Alexandria, and they, and they never, never ceased to amaze me to their commitment. And, you know, I'm very involved with the Chamber of Commerce, and, and uh, you know, I've met a lot of the nonprofits through our, through our involvement with uh, the restaurant Holy Cow. But, uh, you, you really get kind of limited into the number of uh, folks that you meet. And anytime you have, you have an ability to kind of expand your scope of folks uh, that are important to the community, you need, you need to kind of avail yourself of that. And I think the Living Legends program has done that because there, there are really some fascinating people out there, people that, I, even that are on the uh, Legends for this year that I had never heard of before, but you read their bios and what they've done for the city, and they go, man, that is really... That person's pretty cool. They've really done a lot. How, how come I haven't met this person before in my travels? So I think from that standpoint, it's just it's bringing uh, it's bringing a lot of these good folks out of the woodwork that are maybe you know they're below the radar because they're not a maybe they're not a in the business community. They're not involved in the chamber of commerce or whatever. They're not a politician, but they're they're doing their part to uh, make the city a better place. And the Living Legends program uh, gives us an opportunity to to experience those folks. And hopefully chat them up before they uh, they pass on. You know, if I if I come across somebody you know who had who, who had not heard about the Living Legends, uh, I would just say it was a pretty innovative program. You know, you get a lot of writers on uh, these newspapers that are 
they've got these uh, sh sheets of uh, obituaries on politicians and movie stars and famous people that are all, all ready to go. And they never get published uh, until the person passes on. Uh, this program allows you to go ahead and experience all those folks and what they've done in the community prior to that and to uh, uh, really get some education on, uh, on these folks uh, while they're still around. You know, I, um, I'm doing this for my kids. You know, the, the living legend, it's, don't tell me United said this, it's a cool thing. You know, I, I you know, I, uh, um, it's a cool thing what she's doing. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't wanting to be part of it um, beforehand. But I'm, my kids were so excited about this, and I see I see the benefit of, of this deal now because you can. You, you're, it's important to leave some sort of. I don't want to say legacy, but some sort of note, a little notebook. You know, and this will be a little notebook for my kids. So, thanks for doing this.